What's going on, folks? I'd like to welcome you guys. Oh, I was too loud to the camera. I'd like to welcome you guys to another DC TV talk where we talk all DC, all TV. <laughs> I'm not going to say that no more. I'm not going to say that no more. But uh, this is a, uh, this episode going to cover Gotham, episode six, and Arrow, episode three. First one I'm going to dive into is Gotham. First thing I noticed about this entire episode, we did not see any of uh, Bruce Wayne. Uh, at all, we didn't see Alfred, so we don't know exactly what kind of mind state he's in. If he's getting ready to leave Gotham, if we, if he even does leave Gotham, we don't even know if he's gonna leave Gotham at this point because they're doing a lot of things different. He's already like the vigilante type, so we don't know if he's ever going to leave Gotham and then come back. Because I doubt they're gonna do that because it's pretty much this is a show and it's not. I doubt they doing it any time skips anytime soon. Who knows? They can still keep everybody else the same, but I just think the character that plays Bruce Wayne, they can't age him that well because he's kind of like a skinny guy. I don't expect them to bring him back and him be not, you know, toned up. So I don't know exactly how they do that. But we have, uh, we have Butch and Lee. Well, we have Grundy, Lee, and Riddler. They're all operating over there under underground, I right, Butch, uh, the Riddler tries to go to Lee to get her help. And it's pretty much, to me, one thing I noticed about Gotham, no matter what you do to someone, there's always a chance y'all can one day be kind of cool. I honestly think it's, it's pretty much obvious that uh, the Riddler and the Penguin gonna get back cool in some kind of way. It's just how things happen in this show. It's like nobody's pretty much cutting people off completely, okay? Also, we got Professor Pig in this episode. He's over pretty much uh, cutting off Pig's heads and putting them on police cops and, you know, people that are working for Penguin because I think he uh, tried to get a license. Or I don't think he tried to get a license. I just think he he's not liking the, the, the system and he thinks some people should do something about it. And so he knows pretty much what's going on with everybody. But he does, I don't know how exactly he knows all the ins and outs. That's kind of a question I had, but the stuff with him is pretty cool. Uh, he pretty much killing cops and just throwing a pig on his face. And you really didn't get to see his face at all because, of course, he had a pig, pig mask. Uh, Jim Gordon does what he does best, go down there trying to get in front of Penguin. I think Penguin one day going to get tired of Jim. Jim is a guy who breaks a lot of laws and he don't even realize. Like, Jim just be walking in people's houses. He walked in the uh, Falcon girl's house. I'm like, bro, what, what is, like, she didn't invite you here, Jim. Like, what is you doing? And it just, you know, stuff like that. And she's still playing along with Penguin. I knew what she was doing was smart. You can't, I, I, knew, I said, bro, she is going to get Penguin to fall for her and he going to be sick. I knew the entire time. She probably knew she was being watched. She knew people were going to get somebody to look at her. She's very, very intelligent. So I think she's doing exactly what she needs to do to get Penguin to roll over. She canceled the day with him. Well, canceled lunch with him. He's going to get the word about where she at. Go find out. See, she having lunch with somebody else. Okay, she's planning this. Get him to take you to that spot. Open it up. It's not what he thinks. All of this. I, I, I Listen, I, I, you can spot that from a mile away. But all the while, still having a plan for him, which I, I kind of hope she takes over. Because Penguin kind of seems like too in, in centric, eccentric for Eccentric? I think that's the word I'm looking for. I, he, he's kind of like out the deep end. And I, I kind of wanted to where he wanted like the underground, but I feel like he's too, 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 too out there. I, I feel like I need him more underground with it. And uh, yeah, back to the underground. Speaking of underground, talk about the underground fights. I have underground fights pretty much like massacre. I don't know about anybody would enter these things. You pretty much put your life at risk. You are getting your head beat in for money. I'm pretty sure they're not paying that much, bro. Pretty sure they're not paying that much. Uh, Lee's having to do this because she's she's able to work, she's able to help people, and and, and she 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 wants to help people from the terror uh, the, the, the 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 terror thing that got spread. I don't know. <laughs> and, and she's that's what that's her whole reasoning for having to be down there because the person that's over the whole fight club thing is allowing her to be there. The really get some money, think like, hey, you you help me get my brain together, I can get you out of this. 
all of that. And he's, she's, after all the stuff he did to her, certain situations still make you try to write the people. That's why I said no matter who it is, people going to always get back cool and got on some kind of way or another. And then you have Grundy who just pretty much whooping everybody ass because he doesn't feel anything. Even, well, he, he kind of feels shit, but he's pretty much still like a big walking fight machine who you not going to take any airs because he pretty much can't die. So, of course, well, bitch, maybe he cut his head off. I don't know how that is. Uh, Batman usually don't decapitate people, so I don't know if he died to decapitate him or not. Or maybe just put it back on and just regenerate. I think he does have a killing pack. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much it for Gotham. Uh, Penguins, the little plays, the Falcons. Uh, oh, uh, Harvey Bullock got his throat cut. But he, the guy cut it just enough. Because I was wondering, like, when he cut his throat, cause first of all, when Jim got down there, he was like, hey, let me, let me, and, and Jim was trying to approach him. I'm like, okay, is he going to talk all the way or he going to actually cut his throat? Then I thought about it. I said, wait, I'm watching God. Yeah, he pretty much going to cut his throat. And he cut it, but he cut it just enough. And I guess pretty much he's been cutting pig heads. He know his, his precision is pretty good. He cut it just enough to where either Jim could chase him or save Harvey, and he saved Harvey. He saved Harvey, of course. And then Jim asked Harvey, like, you knew all of this stuff was going on, so tell me what's really going on with you. And he pretty much had to confess, like, hey, been taking money from Penguin. It's the only thing I can do. Like, I got bills. I got a lot of stuff on me too. But then I thought about, I'm like, bro, you and Jim got the same job. How much debt is you really in, Harvey? Like, I'm pretty sure you don't. You're not living in a mansion. You're living in an apartment just like Jim, and you're like the head of the police division, like so. You're not getting paid more. It kind of was like weird. I'm like, oh, you, it's not like you just do a lot. But I, I kind of want and will this change Harvey to where he want to go out the Penguin now? But the only person he has backing him up is is Jim. So it's kind of kind of one of it's kind of give you a little intrigue. Like I said, we didn't see uh, any of Bruce, so we don't know what's going on with that. Pretty good episode of Gotham. So we're gonna jump over to Arrow. This was a really good episode of Arrow. We got Diggs, my man Diggle, as the Green Arrow. Also, I just want to point this out. I love Black Canary. I think I like her more than Laura's Black Canary. I I, I really really like her character like a bunch because I feel like she's to me. If they don't do, I feel like she can lead the team, and I would be completely cool with it. I I, I really feel that. We have uh, Oliver pretty much going on with things with uh, his son, uh, him and William. And I, William has like a math test coming up. He don't know how to talk to him. He pretty much does whatever but other parent does in those situations and tell him certain things, but it really doesn't work. Also, we have. Uh, Diggs not being able to make decisions quick enough. Yeah, you know, his mind isn't quite there. He isn't quite as sharp. Uh, he's pretty much out of it, to be honest. And uh, they noticed uh, the detective, the FBI agent that's uh, investigating all of us, she noticed, like, tell your marksman, you know, just brushing up on his, his, his archery skills because there were no arrows thrown. And that's kind of like a problem because Diggs, he can't. So uh, the, uh, that. They, they're looking into everything, they're looking into details. Of course, Oliver's still going to be under surveillance. And kind of like, and the lady has like an idea of everybody. And I really feel like she knows, like, okay, if she knows the entire uh, group, the the, the, the team, Arrow to Team Arrow, that she has started like looking and she has everybody's names up. She like known the social and everything. She'll be able to deduct, like, okay, this guy's. Uh, the guy they call Spartan is no longer here. Just Arrow. So it's Spartan now, Arrow. And if that's your right man, hand man, John Diggle, so he's taking on the mounts. Like, I feel like she's so close to breaking it all the way through. She just has to get proof. But I don't want it to get proof. Also, we get some more Batman references in this thing. Uh, when Felicity was trying to think of her, her name for uh, her and Curtis company that they're opening that she had Oracle up there. That was that was a funny one. I, I don't know if anybody else noticed she had it wrote on the board. That was a funny one. Also we get Onyx in this uh in this episode. She's pretty much taking people down. They will they whoop team arrow ass for a little minute there. 
Uh, she pretty much killing people that used to be like a part of that whole little thing. It's dope. Like I, I, I like her character because she's like I just recently was reading uh what's that under under the red hood. Well, she like, she made an appearance in there and you know uh, it's just talking about how Batman is. She's one of the only people Batman allowed to like stay run around Gotham and like fight crime and stuff like that. So. Pretty much like another like little Batman reference they put in there. They go fuck around and bring Batman on this damn show one day. I'm fucking losing my mind pretty much. Uh, also, we still don't really know what's going on and who planted the uh, picture of Oliver on TV, who gave it to the news people. We still don't know that yet. They didn't give us any indication. They didn't bring that up really at all in this episode. It's a, It was a good episode because I like how they, they did the stuff with Digger and, and the fact that he's... Oliver even asked him, like, yo, I, I've, been, I've had times where I'm down here and you came to help me. You know, like, I, so I know that look that you have on your face. He tell him, like, I don't know how you did how how you were the leader you were, and, like, how, how you was able to, like, overcome all these things. He like, I had you, that, you know, and, 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 and you would get used to it. And, and another thing, uh, we have the fight scene. We also have another one. We have another scene in which uh, Wild Dog was pretty much like, hey, man, you got to come back. Diggs just ain't, he can't do this. He ain't cut for it. And, and like, it really, it made you see, because, listen, Dig, Dig, my dog, but he really was not ready for, to be put in that position. Like I said, if anybody I think should be put in there, it's Black Canary, but you can't have Black Canary running the team with Green Arrow on it. I just don't see how they would do that, not for, for the show's sake. It, it, it just wouldn't make sense. And plus, people, I think people would start to observe stuff like that. So maybe it really wouldn't work out, you know, you know in the end. But you have a few things. You have a few different things. There's a lot of the storylines going on. I'm enjoying them all. You have the uh, thing with uh, Felicity coming to uh, Tudor, uh, uh, William, and, and him enjoying her company, and all of them want her to be around more because he want her in the life. And it's it's a lot, and I th I feel like they played that. I, listen, a lot of people have like a problem with the whole uh, Oliver Felicity thing. I don't. I don't. Like it's only like it's fucking obvious, bro. Like it's obvious, like and it's it's either that or you just have this whole thing between these two characters who obviously have a thing for them. Now you you don't just have to completely force the whole story to be around it, which I, I think they handled a good job of having like the main stuff and that just being like a tighter part of the show. But I think it's pretty obvious, like and it's a part. Believe me, it it that. That whole thing of it draws. I know pretty much, pretty much everybody want like all of us should be with Black Canary, which is yeah, you know, really true. But you got to think, we like season six, Black Canary there. We got a new one, and I, I don't mind them like in the future. Maybe something like that happening, but right now it's, it's cool. Uh, yeah, I, and also Felicity seems to be acting very, very strange. Uh, if if I don't. Like, if, I don't know if I'm tripping, but she seems to be acting very strange. Uh, also, towards the end of this episode, Digger got his stuff back together. He, he got his mind right. Also, that fight scene in the car was fucking dope. That has to be the dopest fight scene in a car. Well, it's not a car. It was like a truck. A limo. In the limo. That has to be the dopest limo fight scene I've ever seen. I don't know if anybody else liked it, but I really liked it. Like, I liked the fight scenes this episode a lot. Like, there was some really good fight scenes. Uh, but, yeah, that, that limo fight scene was for me. Outside and then into the limo, that shit was dope as hell. That that <laughs> I loved it. Uh, also, we find out that uh, they they get like dig this uh this like instead of like uh, actual bow and arrow, they get like the the, the gun type arrow thing, uh, and he pretty much shooting the, the tennis balls. They like oh yeah, he's back, he's back. The nerve damage is gone. Uh, I think it's called the, the, the was it something he had in his arm, and he says it's gone. I knew right there at the moment I said, nah, something going on with Diggs. And we find out that he's been buying some kind of, some kind of, uh, uh, I guess, strengthener to, to put in his arm and, you know, that shake back. Kind of like, I'm skeptical. Like, hey, Diggs, I don't know what's going on with you. You might need to chill a little bit, brother. Uh, but yeah, I'm cool with it. Cool season. Enjoyed it. Oh, I just thought, my bad. I, Something else completely popped in my head uh, about a show. Another something pretty different. But yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, 
I am. So, you guys let me know what you thought about those two episodes down in the comments. What did you think? Uh, hit that like button, too. Right on my channel uh, for more DC TV talk. And I'll catch up with you guys later. On the next episode, we'll be covering episode four of The Flash, DC, DC Ladies of Tomorrow, and Supergirl. So, until then, peace out, peace.